just, yeah, going to go with the music here. As fall colors dissipate, it's not over for outdoor gardens, even if you think it is. Leave it to gardening guru Cisco Morris to give them a pop of color. He's going to help us today. Come on out. Where are you? There you are. Woo! How are you? How was hey, your weekend? I am fantastic. Oh, what a weekend with Happy that Seahawks Seahawk game. Oh, la, 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 yep. la, la. And it, and it lasted a while, so no gardening happened at my house, although I did I <laughs> no, manage a little water either. in the plants. <laughs> so what you're trying to, to tell us today is don't worry. You may not have your flowers, but we can still have color and some We can fun. still have color, and we can still feed the hummingbirds in winter. Yes. Because I travel. I can't hang up a feeder. Mm -hmm. Hummingbirds can starve to death in one half hour in freezing weather if they're used to a feeder Yikes. and it freezes or it's gone. So since I travel, I don't want to hang a feeder, but I feed them with plants. Well, that's a good idea because you don't want to get them used to it if exactly. you can't be consistent. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what we okay. have here. So, and we'll try not to stab so ourselves. So the reason I brought this, <laughs> this is good old Oregon grape. I know. I so like everybody this. knows this yeah. thing. Well, these are Oregon grapes from Asia. Interesting. And this blooms in spring. It's great for hummingbirds, but... Uh, you know, that's about it. It gets nice berries that feed birds Those and everything. Red yeah, these mm -hmm. get nice. The, the American natives used to eat these berries, but you got to put a lot of honey in there with them. Are they bitter? <laughs> they made some kind of jam because I've tried eating them straight. Did I have pucker power or okay. what? Oh, so Mary ran out us. the back door when I walked in. <laughs> no, thank you. Don't need those. Okay, that's like the third time I've run into this one. So this one, where do you plant this? It's got these um, little yeah, thorns. Not where your puppy edges. or the kids are going to play. So or your I shirt or yeah, anything. I've got them in back areas of the gap uh, of my garden, but I do have to give you a big warning. This is 15 feet tall. This one's called Charity. No and look way. at this thing, you know. So I cut that off the top with a pole pruner this morning. But it goes all the way to the ground with these super sharp prickers. Yikes. People think it's holly when they see it or something. If you are weeding on your hands and knees like mm -hmm. I do and you back into this, wow. you will find it to be a very <laughs> uplifting experience. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put it someplace where you don't want anybody coming through That's the yard. Right. They but, won't do that. But Does, these love dry shade. So oh. you could put them under the conifers yep. and they and most be happy. trees won't grow there, you know, most plants. Are the hummingbirds happy with this stuff? Oh, do they love these flowers? They're on them all winter long. That's Sometimes great. they're covered with snow and they're still blooming and they're away. They're still blooming. It's beautiful yellow. They're you real can see the pretty. ones that are coming out over here. Yep. Now, does this baby bloom? Yeah, this is a brand new one called Marvel. I've never oh, seen it be before. Easy for us and to look, not so prickery, a little prickery, but not bad. No, that's fine. No, not that's bad fine. at all. So this one gets only eight feet. This is fifteen, and it's supposed to have a super fragrant, big yellow flower. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to see it when it blooms. Is you that know? just like once a year, or does it yeah, happen? Only in winter. In, so all it's these, also in winter. all these cool. from Asia okay. only bloom in winter, which is why I love them because I've got tons of things to feed the hummingbirds in the summer. Right. But, so this Marvel is a brand new one. And uh, these things don't like full sun, so you got to give so them a shady spot. So could you put it the spot. same spot that you would with these under yeah. the conifers yep. or in a place? Yeah, and you said perfect. about eight feet tall, I'm right? I'm going to put this by my uh, uh, my yard waste container because mm -hmm. every time I go out there, I've got one of these, and it gets me every <laughs> time. I'm like, not again, you know. You always think you're going to put those someplace where it's going to be okay, and then yep. it, it kind of never is. This is the softest cool. one you can get. It's I called love this. Soft Caress. So these are Mahonias. Mahonias. And, uh, yep. With and the uh, look at those. Blossoms. And it's got tons of them all over the plant. I cut this off the top. And this only gets about five feet tall. Oh, I like so this. So you could put this anywhere as long as it's not too sunny. Okay. And it has the great, you know, variation yeah. in the color and the leaves. Yeah, and you too. know what? It gets redder and redder as winter goes. It's I really like that. pretty with the yellow flowers. It's a knockout. I like it. What are we looking there? Is this so the I same wanted thing? to show. Look at how big the flowers. There's one in full bloom in oh my, my garden. Goodness. And uh, and the next picture. Wait till you see that. That's covered with snow, in still blooming snow. away. The hummingbirds were coming right in. So 
the, the poor hummingbirds were out snow and everything, hardly anything going on. They had tons of food to eat in my garden, you know. You are very good for hummingbird relations. <laughs> I That's love they hummingbirds. must be very happy with this you. This is my favorite one. There Why is. do you like this one? This one's pointy. It's very too. prickly. It's really <laughs> nasty. It's called Arthur Menzies, and that'll all be on the website. But look at it, it's got red stems. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you could show that, but it's got the softest yellow pastel flowers you've ever ever seen. I hope you can get it's, in there or not, yeah, but maybe you can kind of too... see the color. Yeah, it's, there we yeah, go. Yeah, very so butter yellow. So it's much more soft yellow. It's so gorgeous, you can't believe it. You well, know? all of these with yellow that have the red and green leaves, that's a really pretty and color. A lot of times these these branches turn dark red in the winter time, so like it's it. really neat. Okay, so let's talk about planting these. If okay. you've decided you want to do that, will they bloom this winter when yeah. you put that guy in your yeah, in Yeah, because like this guy, you know, I bought it's that at the nursery. It. it was cheaper than heck, too. It was like 15 bucks. I couldn't believe my eyes, you know. So that Grab that before year. anybody else. <laughs> I did. And by next year, it'll probably be five or six feet tall. Right. And it'll have a lot more blooms on it, you know. So, yeah, you could plant these now. Now, I'm hoping it looks like it's got a bud on it. It does, doesn't so it? I, and it, this one's supposed to be super fragrant. So I might cut some off, bring it in the house as a bouquet, you know. And um, the main thing is... Uh, you know, they could take pretty lousy soil, and they could take pretty dark now you're shades. you're talking so. my language. <laughs> Shade <laughs> bad soil, and they'll still be Ooh, fine. Oh, no, no. Now, the <laughs> one thing I always tell people, you know, people get mad at this Oregon grape because it gets so scraggly and it ugly. It does. So just cut it to the ground yeah. in the spring, and it comes right back. You could do that with any of these. That's these are easy plants. Easy, really easy, easy to grow. Just don't back it the just one. Don't oh, back, la, especially la. this one in the middle. I'm telling you, we're not even gonna we're just gonna lift it out on the table. Thank you so oh, much. You're welcome. Coming up when we come back, James Beard winning author Sarah Owens shows us a delicious dip from her latest cookbook. We'll hop into the kitchen right after this break.